Paul, yes. <laughs> Just looking at the difference between the substantive due process, right, and the procedural due process, <laughs> Then there's the statutes cannot be void for vagrant, uh, vagant, vagueness. Yes, statutes cannot be void uh, for vagueness. Yes, statutes cannot be overbroad. Oh. Now, this equal protection clause that the states don't want to enforce. Yes, mm -hmm. that nor shall any state deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the laws. Uh huh applies to the state government. State constitutions generally have a similar uh, provision. Uh, California Constitution 2010 <clears throat> prevents the state government from enacting criminal laws that discriminate in an unreasonable and unjustified manner. <laughs> now, I know that you say restoration laws are very defined in exactly how they can be applied to any court case. <laughs> But when they're applied to an individual for a two-count criminal complaint on June 16th of 2017 in Brennan, Washington, yes, for a serious crime per se that happens to be a civil contempt of court uh, restraint uh, charge, yes, mm -hmm. how many individuals have to go through restoration treatment because they violated the restraint provisions but they did nothing criminal? Pooch! Now, I know when the police never investigated me, they got emails from me every day, didn't they? Does the Port Angeles Police Department know that I was not in Brennan, Washington on June 16th of 2017? It looks like these statutes that cannot be void for vagueness uh -huh, cannot be overbroad. Does the police department have the obligation to exonerate any person of accused of a crime when they have the evidence themselves? Now, uh, for the last year, mm -hmm, I have uh, contacted the police department, yes, about my rights being violated, both procedural and substantive rights, yes. And then you're going to, uh, you're going to arrest me next Friday for a failure to appear on Tuesday because I'm not going to court on Tuesday. <laughs> That's not what the slip of paper says. <laughs> Now, is there some sort of um, overbroad or vagueness in the actual RCWs of the state about if you give an individual their next appearance date <laughs> and their public defender does not contact them at least five judicial days before uh, you decide to change? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm thinking you're in violation. Now, let's look at the substance of this. Pooch! <laughs> you at the the... Well... Let's look at the two-count criminal complaint, okay, prosecuting attorneys. You say that you have some evidence that you would not give to me, mm -hmm, that uh, I contacted my wife through a third party that violates the restraint provisions, and since there's no police officer that actually investigated the two-count criminal complaint, the prosecuting attorney's office did something. Now, these restoration laws, mm -hmm. have they actually been defined as when they are applicable during uh, an accused court uh, uh, procedure? <laughs> now, I noticed for a year, uh, Speedy didn't toll until you had that mental health evaluation. <clears throat> But I would have thought that as a procedural due process, restoration laws only come into play when you are sure that there is evidence enough to find guilt of the accused and there are witnesses on behalf of the the victim. Yeah, yeah. But you don't allow me to compel any witnesses on my behalf, and you wouldn't allow me to admit the evidence that I was in Port Angeles, Washington on that day. I mean, when you think about making videos, P. Budnick 21, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of evidence in the 224, isn't there? Pa -poo, pa -poo. But there's those community guidelines again. Cha cho, cha cho. Now, I'm just wondering how the state legislature couldn't put some sort of of condition of the application of the restoration laws so that they're not overbroad. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that uh, at the first get go, you decide you're going to have a 1077. Poo! <laughs> Instead of admitting any evidence on my behalf. Now, Amendment Due Process Clause prohibits the federal government from discrimination if the discrimination is so unjustifiable as it violates due process. Bowling versus Sharp, 2010. <laughs> might be using that as some sort of precedence in a lawsuit. Yes, yes, yes. 
because um, this uh, discrimination is unjustifiable if it violates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the prohibition on government discrimination is not absolute. <laughs> you can discriminate against certain individuals. <laughs> Depends on the class of persons targeted for special treatment. Restoration laws. Yes. In general, court scrutiny is heightened according to a sliding scale when the subject of discrimination is an arbitrary classification. Somebody that's crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Arbitrary means random and often includes characteristics an individual is born with, such as being crazy or their race or national origin. Ouch! The most arbitrary classifications demand strict scrutiny of the restoration laws, which means the criminal statute must be supported by a compelling government interest. <laughs> now, these compelling government interests that the restoration laws have went through, both the uh, federal government and the state government, what is the compelling government interest? <laughs> now, I've, I've read the state's response that the government is compelled to uh, make sure somebody is restored to sanity so they can be tried for the criminal <laughs> offenses that happen to be civil offenses. Yeah! Yes, yes. But this uh, compelling government interest in uh, depriving due process mm, so that the uh, compelling government interest, yes, mm, the compelling government interest, to make sure that somebody doesn't have notice of court hearings before issuing dissolutions of marriage, <laughs> to make sure that a father doesn't have notice of court hearings before issuing protection orders, <laughs> to make sure that no one has any fucking rights at all. Mm.